this is a really uh, special coffee because we're going to talk about boys. And although a lot of our conversations at Help Suit You are about gender equity and about the girls, I'm a mother of three sons and I raised many, many others and have always been very concerned about the boys. We need to know that the boys are getting the help they need. When I started Help Suit You in 2004, there was a study that of 300,000 uh, youth in uh, South Africa and 9,000 in Lesotho, which is a very large sample size. And there were more little boys sexually abused in Sub-Saharan Africa than little girls. Abused boys become abuse, abusive men. We all know that. But during that time, people didn't want to fund the boys. They only wanted to talk about the girls. We couldn't get anybody interested. So we just did it anyway and didn't tell. We didn't talk about our work with the boys, but we've done it all this time. And those of you who've been to Lesotho have seen our programs with boys and have seen how much they love them. So it's really wonderful that the interest in boys programs is increasing and that the funding is increasing. For example, we have one person in Ottawa who has been giving very generously with her family to support our Her Boy program and help us get that going for years because they need our help. There's too much pressure put on the girls to, to hold up the whole gender equity, to know their rights, to stand up for themselves, to do all these things. And we all know that the vast majority of the perpetrators are men and boys. So um, thank you for joining us and for caring about this. And I hope this will be a really informative session. I'm sure it will be. You've all met, most of you have met May Mamalasani before, who is our country director. And I'd like to introduce, to those of you who don't know, Ndate Sello. He will be chatting with me. And Ndate Sello, I met him when he was, he's one of our alumni. Uh, he'll tell you about how he came in to help us too, but uh, I've known him for a long time and watched him grow and be able to, he now has many people, he's a program manager, he's able to, he supervises many of our uh, program officers, he's in charge of our uh, Herboy program, he actually webbed it up, it's been very successful. Those of you who've gone have met him, and I, ha I hesitate to say, you've been charmed by him. He's a great dancer, he's got an amazing smile, and he is uh, well known for his work with boys and men. So I think we'll just start. Um, and just with a reminder that in the 45, 50,000 people we've had go through our intensive programs, I would estimate that about 18,000 have been boys or men. So that's the kind of volume of work we've been doing with uh, males. So uh, Jamel and Dante? Jamela me. O felish wan? Ki fila hante me o fila wan. Ki fila hante ke Jamela o bona. Ki Jamela o bona le na o. So thank you for joining us, and um, I just wanted you to tell our guests uh, how you came into the Helpless Suchu family, and why you stayed. Thank you, thank you so much, me. Thanks for that, and uh, good morning to to all of you. Um, I. Uh, unlike other boys, majority of the boys in Lesotho, I was privileged enough to attend school at the same time also hitting the animals, just like that. Now we are talking about um, the head boys. So in 2012, I graduated from the National University of Lesotho, studying Bachelor's Arts in Social Work. Um, unfortunately, the very same year, I happened to, 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 to lose my, my father. And I was hopeless at home, not knowing where to start to provide for my family. I remember a friend of mine came visiting me, uh, trying to provide support to me. And he told me of the Help Pursuit Leaders in Training program. So I was actually hesitant to come for, for the training, but uh, he insisted. After he insisted, I came by, applied for the, for the, um, uh, for the program. 
and uh, interviewed and successfully I was uh, part of the uh, participants in the, in the program. That was in 2013. But uh, coming here for me was just to say, I'm going to wind time as I'm waiting for God to provide something to, 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 so that I can provide uh, needs for my family now that I'm, I'm a deputy father. Um, my stay here with the Help Sutra, I learned a lot of things during the LEAD program that I thought that perhaps I knew when I was studying at university, but I realized that, well, I didn't know much talk about issues of HIV, talk about uh, issues of uh, gender-based violence. Uh, it was interesting for me in the, in the program. I was also fortunate enough to be selected amongst uh, the professional intents that uh, were given a platform to uh, be part of uh, the, the program. That was in 2013 when I started uh, as the intern in the, in the Help Sutro family. Fortunately enough, uh, a number of times I was able to be appointed or nominated uh, rather to represent young people in a number of uh, 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 platforms, either being nationally and internationally. I remember I've been to Ethiopia, I've been to Senegal, I've been to South Africa, I've been to Botswana, representing young people under Help Lesotho. And from that, I, I learned a lot of things. And uh, one thing that I would say is keeping me here at Help Lesotho, I was able to heal during that time of uh, what I went through. That made me believe in the work of Help Lesotho and uh, hence why I'm still here even today. I believe in the work of Help Lesotho and I'm always happy to see other people changing because of the facilitation or the work that I do with so many other uh, beneficiaries of Help Lesotho, more specifically, the, the head boys and young men in the organization that are beneficiaries. Kelly Bondati. So we you and I have talked about this a lot over the years about how to help the boys, how to reach them. Um, historically, it's difficult for uh, programs to get going because the boys don't attend. Mm -hmm. They don't see that it's important. They don't want to go. So what is it you feel is so important to reach them? And why do you think they want to come to our program so much? One very important factor of our program in Mayapak uh, is that we create a safe space for boys to, um, to, 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 to open up. Basically, what is happening with the uh, young boys in Lesotho, they are forced to quit school for, for hating the animals at a very young age. And uh, this deprives them uh, their basic need of education. And also, they are deprived of socializing, which perhaps will help them to create healthy relationships with uh, um, women and girls. For that matter, they remain prone to perpetrators of gender-based violence, and they are also not given a chance to um, access essential services such as sexual reproductive health services. For, for that matter, um, the approach that we have as Help Lesotho is creating that safe space for them to share. And also uh, that helps them a lot to see that they are loved because as Help Lesotho, we know that they are not bad people. They just find themselves doing bad things. That's the thing, eh? When I travel all over, <clears throat> excuse me, and I go and see them, I always take a little opportunity to, and I ask them if I can give them a hug when I leave. Mm -hmm. And they just squeeze me. And often they kiss my ear or they'll whisper in my ear. They're just children. Yeah. They're just young men who need to, to know they're of some value. And that's such an important part of our work. It always brings me to tears, mm -hmm. how deeply moved they are that someone cares about them. So why do you feel that the situation in Lesotho is, is even more important right now to address the boys? Like I, like I mentioned Mayor, earlier on that uh, these young boys, they are not bad people. They're just finding themselves doing bad things. They are discriminated against by the society. They are also the hardest uh, group to, to engage like I mentioned, because 
they they uh, they now lend trust in anyone because the society has given up on them. So, like I also said, as help Musutu, we find the need to engage male people to 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 drive to a, a way that would say we are we are creating a society of healthy relationships between men and women. You're on mute, Tundate. Sorry for that. I think maybe the host muted me mistakenly. So like I was saying, uh, um, they, they are the hardest uh, group to engage because they lack trust to other people because of the discrimination they have experienced um, from their societies. So for that reason, they don't trust anyone. But uh, with us, because we understand them better, we know they are good people and we find uh, ways to creating safe space for us and for them to also open up, to also learn that they can use their masculinity for positive results in their community, to creating healthy um, relationships with women and girls and also advocate, advocating for their own rights and also the rights of uh, women and, and girls. Thanks, Ndata. Can you just give us some, just a few statistics to help us to frame the significance of the problem? As of now, may, um, like I said, boys are outcast and uh, troublemakers. That is by the societies. Like uh, about 44% of boys report that they are depressed from the report that we get uh, from the field. Uh, about 78% of uh, uh, head boys drop out of school. And also something like uh, the 1% knew that uh, forced marriage is actually illegal. Because as we are saying, they are not uh, socialized. They are not even aware of uh, their rights. They are not also aware of the rights of others. So it, it is very challenging for them to, to protect and also to respect the rights of others and that is so so heartbreaking because they are not given a platform where they can learn that as they take most of the time away from their, their households so it's so touching so touching thank you um the her boy program is is unusual and it's was so famous as i wrote about in my letters the last couple of years it was you were invited to germany with one of the boys to talk about it. Um, so could you tell us why this particular program uh, is important and what the impact do you feel is? Thanks, ma'am, for, for that. Um, I'd love to share a story of uh, the boy that uh, you just said, I, I, I accompanied him to, to Germany. Um, I won't mention the name, of course. Uh, this uh, boy, mentioned that uh, he was so abusive and even in the community, the counselors or the community leaders were uh, justifying that he was a very abusive person to young girls and uh, of course to women. So he expressed that the headway program changed his life a, a lot. He even initiated uh, a nonviolent network in the village uh, whereby him and other head boys were educating they are head boy counterparts of the importance of uh, um, respecting the rights of women and also advocating for the rights of, uh, of head boys because like we are saying, their rights are also violated in terms of uh, um, 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 uh, engaging them in, in, in heading the animals. Some of them are doing that job without any pay. So hence why they are not aware of their rights. They are not also aware of other people's rights. So the boy was uh, nominated to go to Germany, that was in 2019, whereby he was going to share the stories of the head boys, the situation of the head boys in Lesotho, and also share of what he's doing uh, with uh, the other network to advocate for the rights of head boys, the rights of women and girls. And I'm, I'm glad to tell you that, Mepeg, as we speak today, that the particular person um, is now representing head boys on national platforms to advocate for the rights of head boys and also advocate for the rights of women and girls. So we are creating a mob of young boys who will now advocate for the rights of uh, head boys without us 
doing it, but them seeing the need for, for, for that. Isn't that exciting? He was so shy and so anxious and he, and it was, you know, it was, with your help, it was a success. Um, one of the components of our programs is that the boys go and advocate against gender-based violence. They do activities in the uh, community. They go and talk to the local counselors, to the chiefs. They go and talk at schools. Part of all of our uh, programs is this notion of advocacy, advocacy for the rights of everyone, whether it's the grandmothers, they advocate for their own rights, the herd boys advocate for theirs, the girls for theirs. So that's a really important uh, point to highlight that these boys feel they have a purpose now, they could do something. Um, on the social strata, they're really the bottom of the barrel. And the fact that they feel that they can be important, that they can speak out, that people will listen to them is a major factor in their uh, redemption. Thank you. I'd like to bring uh, Mae Mamalasani into the conversation because she has another perspective. She also has a son. Um uh, Mae. Good morning for Meli Bontate. Good uh, afternoon to some of you. And uh, good evening again, Datisilla from uh, Lesotho. Thank you very much, Amepek, for having us today. Well, thank you both for staying late so that, so that uh, we could have this conversation. So May, when you've been going around, I know you've been spending uh, a lot of time going into the field to go to every single program, every location, to sit in on the sessions, to be part of the conversations. So what are your observations about our work with the boys and its impact? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, I think uh, what I would say is uh, with the introduction that you gave that uh, mostly we've been working around uh, gender equity. And uh, when we work around gender equity, it is good that uh, we ensure that uh, we strengthen the women and the girls, but uh, leaving out the boys still leaves the bigger gap because then we are not able to address some of the issues that they have some of uh, the issues that uh, they are perpetrators to violence and such uh, things. So I think the program has really been uh, very important. I have uh, therefore been uh, able to visit uh, the Head Boys program. And I think this was on a very important, uh, uh, very important uh, day for them as they were graduating from a three to four months uh, program where they were going through life skills training, they were going through communications, uh, uh, communi development of communication skills, how they can be able to build uh, healthy relationships, uh, protecting and uh, uh, respecting women's rights and such. And uh, from uh, the graduation, I was so very touched from uh, the, the way they expressed the change within themselves. The change that could only be felt by them as individuals instead of the change that could be seen by the program officers like Nda Desillo and Nda Deufako that work with them directly. I remember one of the participants uh, was saying that, uh, I know that uh, I am up there in the mountains all alone and there'll come a time when I go back home. But when I go back home, I know that I don't have to force myself on uh, girls. I always have to have better communication and better skills with them. But on top of that, we know as Andrew Desilo has mentioned that uh, when he lost his father, he had to be a deputy father. Some of these boys also lose their parents when they are very young. And with that patriarchal system, they also feel that as fathers now they have certain things of, uh, or ways of doing things like disrespecting their parents. But even from their parents, their parents were able to say, thank you very much Herr help Lesotho for bringing these people uh, on board because from uh, the trainings that they have, we've seen changed, respectful individuals and citizens of tomorrow. So therefore that means that uh, with uh, the little uh, interaction they have with the communities from the trainings that we have with them, they're able to still go back and fit in and integrate into the communities as well responsible and respectable individuals. So that was a really very, uh, it was very inspiring for me when I came in 
it was the first time that I worked uh, directly with head boys and looking at uh, the, the change they, they were portraying, it was really very important for everyone else to say, this is something that uh, we can now then be able to say, there is a way that we are including and engaging males in ensuring that there is a lessened uh, violence in our communities, there's also a, a respect of our women's rights. Kelly Boame, I think it's a real indicator when we have the grief and loss sessions, we have men in lots of our programs. They're in the computer and life skills programs, the leadership programs. We have a special program for uh, grade seven boys. It's uh, school goes in at grade eight, high school. And these is to help to this program, Guys for Good, is to help them prepare for high school. But in all, and grief and loss is done in all of those programs, but the way these boys just weep and all of this emotion comes out, culturally, it's not okay for boys. And it used to be like this for our, in our culture as well. It's not just the Basutu culture, but the pent up emotion that these boys have and the inability they have to communicate their feelings and uh, their understanding of things. The uh, communities in which we work with the grandmothers and the young mothers, the way the change in these boys is appreciated by them. The boys change from being belligerent to being cooperative. They change from being bullies to being communicated, communicative. They change from being sullen and moody to being positive and contributing. So it affects all of their families and all of their communities. It's really touching. I have to say, when, when I take people to Sutu and we go to see the groups, it's often the herd boys that touches them the most because they're so transparent in their appreciation and in their, their gratitude for, for being cared for. I, I, think, mm -hmm. I think, I think uh, like you were saying, it's the way that our boys are, uh, are socialized they are socialized to be hard and not soft okay. and we know that uh, with emotions uh, if you are suppressing your emotions all the time that is when that is still lot talks about uh, 44 percent of the boys being depressed and here we are not only talking about head boys but with the head boys it becomes even more challenging because with everything else they are out in the mountains all by themselves with the other one by the other side of uh, the the mountain no one to really communicate any kind of emotions with anyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, other, the other example that I would give was uh, when we were having our community dialogues. You can tell that when men are working together and uh, discussing issues on their own, it becomes much easier. And uh, there's been a saying lately that uh, our women are so empowered, but now where do we leave our men? And with the less empowered men, then it still becomes a challenge. But with the programs that we have, it is bridging the gap to ensure that uh, those men are still able to approach the skills and feel uh, that uh, they are their counterparts. It's the same when we are talking about uh, the guys for good, it's the mm -hmm. same as with the pills. So when you have these uh, groups and uh, bringing them to understand their issues at that level, you're able to bridge the communication gap so that they can be able to work together growing up together. Thank you, May. I, I was just remembering standing outside of the, uh, the leadership center one day, being we were training police officers and being surrounded by the chief of police, all these important police officers. They found out who I was. They literally surrounded me so I couldn't leave and begged for more programming. The next day, there was a, the chief of police gave us a list of a hundred police officers he wanted trained. That is our biggest complaint. May, why aren't you training over here and over there? Why aren't more boys in the programs? They used to beg us for programs, which is really wonderful, that kind of motivation. And we're hoping to create that critical mass of boys who respect their rights of, of others, but also of themselves. So thank you. I'd like to um, thank you both for your contribution and open this up to uh, conversation. Um, we keep this to a short copy. 
so that if you feel you have to leave, you won't feel badly, but we're um, absolutely ready, willing and delighted to stay. And we're gonna have questions and answers and uh, just have a, an informal conversation. And before we start, I just want to uh, give Ndati Salo the last word. And I wanna thank you all for joining us, for caring so much about our beneficiaries as uh, Marlene was saying, we just love all of our donors. They're just a constant inspiration to us. So thank you for that. Daddy Sella, do you want to just say a few closing remarks before we open it up to discussion? Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Was I, I would love to say something. Um, something for me to say is that uh, we, we are so, so very uh, help, um, thankful of the support that uh, we are getting for the head boy program because they they really need what the uh, help Sutu is giving to them. Like I mentioned earlier, they are finding themselves doing bad things. They are not bad people. One other thing to acknowledge here is that uh, because of the, the impact that they themselves and head boys feel after our interventions, they are always begging for more. They are always um, telling us uh, we should be reaching to, to other head boys out there who were not uh, privileged enough to be part of the training. So we are so thankful of the support uh, of uh, the prayers uh, from anyone that, that is praying for us around the globe. We are also thankful to MEPEC and uh, the Canada team for, for the support they are, they are giving to, to us. I think that's all MEPEC I, I have, but I, I feel so touched, you know, when you talk about Head boys, uh, my heart uh, go in pieces because I understand them so very well. I, I my heart is very close to to, to them so very well. Mm -hmm. I, I thank you, Kelly Boy Dutch. And also, we have a dream of training all the police officers in the country because that is a major issue, and uh, we're always looking to see if we can get enough funding to to really. Uh, train them up and Ndate is leading us a group of young men on our staff to, uh, he's been doing a lot of the program delivery himself. So to raise up more young men of our alumni who can take on more of this work. It's one of the most essential things we do. So Kiali Boa Hoholo, Mele Ndate. And let's just open it up for questions. Kate can facilitate and I'll just, Kate and I will roll around and see, make sure we see all the hands and, and uh, answer. you can ask anyone. Everybody, I just wanted to mention, you are welcome to use the Zoom function to raise your hand. So if you click on reactions, you'll be able to click a little button to raise your hand if you have a question. You're also uh, welcome to type it into the chat uh, and I can read it out. Uh, and let our team respond to it. So to kick us off, uh, I do have one, uh, actually a couple of questions that uh, were submitted to us uh, even before we got started today. So the first one uh, will go to you, Ndate Sello. Uh, what impact has COVID-19 had on the programming with boys? Thank you so much, uh, Kate, for that question. I think uh, one uh, very important issue is that uh, with COVID-19, we has experienced uh, uh, food insecurity. So for the fact that uh, um, majority of the head boys, like I, I mentioned, they spend so much time away from their families. It's uh, normally difficult for them to get food while they're in the a cattle post, that is uh, where the animals are grazing away from home by themselves. So it was also challenging for them to get enough food to sustain them while they are there, because already there was uh, insufficient uh, food supplies in their, in their homes. So I think it's one thing that uh, affected uh, the, the boys, especially the, the head boys. One other issue that uh, um, was uh, underlying was the issue of uh, gender-based violence. Uh, as a country, we experienced uh, high rise numbers of uh, um, GBV, gender-based violence, basically because of the, the, the insufficient uh, resources in the, in the households, whereby um, 
men were using their masculinity to fight uh, women for the limited uh, resources in the, in the household. So that uh, called for more interventions from us in terms of education and also with the uh, um, relief or food aid that uh, we provided under our care for caregivers uh, relief uh, program or project. Thank you, Ndate. And May Mamalatsani, did you want to add to that? Yes, may, may I, I think uh, in that day, still in uh, uh, as part of uh, the beginning of uh, the discussion, he mentioned that uh, some of the boys, the issue of uh, trust and uh, the issue of uh, usual interactions is very important. So because of uh, the restrictions and not being able to uh, get to the uh, head boys programs and uh, other boys, it has been a challenge to ensure that there's consistency in the information that we share. But on top of that, uh, boys, because of the way they are socialized, they are easily negatively influenced. And with their schools having closed for quite some time, you'll find that uh, most of them have been exposed to uh, negative influences such as uh, uh, drugs and as such, you find that uh, they end up uh, being in, uh, in trouble. Uh, there's uh, uh, an example here in Liribe where uh, the boys during the, the lockdown uh, decided to go and uh, help with uh, crossing the people from South Africa to Lesotho. And one of the boys drowned and, dr and died. And so these are some of the, 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 the negative impacts that we have due to COVID-19. I think most of you might be aware that most of the schools have also been uh, closed because of COVID. But prior to that, we had a whole year of our school uh, strikes and the boys are not interested to go back to school anymore. They have uh, some of them left to the South African mines and with everything else, we know how uh, the mines and uh, the minerals have been depreciating and some are coming back. So we are just looking at how can we best uh, include them in everything it's, and make sure that if with any uh, uh, pandemic that we have, with any challenges we have, we can still be able to engage them so that they understand the importance of uh, better life skills, they understand the importance of education so that they can be better men for tomorrow. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, a question has just come in from John Graham, who is the chair of our board. And he asks, has the training had an impact on the herd boys in terms of their career ambitions, such as looking for other jobs? So Ndate Sello, could you answer that? Well, uh, th thanks so much uh, um, uh, for that uh, question. That day, John, uh, we miss you so much in Lesotho. <laughs> well, um, to share a little bit, uh, some of the boys, uh, because we engage in their, their parents and caregivers, um, some of them, some of the caregivers realize the importance of uh, letting boys to access education. And uh, I'm proud to, to mention today that uh, there are a number of them that uh, were able to be uh, given a chance to go back to school. Though we, we, we haven't dragged uh, the, 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 the process yet, but uh, we are proud to say that uh, some of the caregivers were able to see that there's a need to let the boys go back to school because uh, they were sharing with the parents that uh, we wanted to go to school, but because we were fearful of uh, telling you what we want, we couldn't raise the point that we want to go back to school. Rather, we, we, we were forced to quit school to go to heading. So um, proudly, some of the boys, yes, went back to school and uh, we, are, we are hoping that they will unleash their potentials up until they finish school to reach to their desired uh, careers. Wonderful, that's great to hear. Uh, May Memalitsani, um, I think maybe you could answer this question. Um, so is all programming divided by gender or are there times that boys and girls participate together? And what is the reasoning? So obviously this is bigger than just the Hurt Boy program, but looking at all of Helpless U2. Uh, we have, uh programs that uh, we, we have uh, uh, girls and boys are uh, participating together. I'll give an example of uh, 
the leaders in training program that we have, uh, where we have our young uh, boys and girls uh, participate together. And uh, we also have programs where we have girls and boys participating in a different, I mean, uh, uh, separately, like we talked about the, the guys for good and uh, the pale girls uh, with MEPEG. We also have uh, programs where we would have um, discussions just with uh, each gender so that we can be able to discuss our certain issues. I think when we, it comes to a certain uh, sexual and reproductive health uh, discussions, some of them are sensitive. And with the communities that we work in, especially in the rural communities, you find that it is uh, difficult to have these discussions as free and open as we can be. And that way, we are then able to separate them so that they can feel free to discuss whatever issues they have. But at the end of the day, we bring them together as a way of building a platform to seek support from each other, but also a platform to uh, build strategies of uh, addressing the challenges that they have around the issues that they might bring in, uh, be, be bringing uh, together. So I think it's a... Uh, it depends on uh, the programs, but uh, when we look at uh, building healthy relationships, when we look at uh, a boyfriend girlfriend relationships, when you're looking at uh, issues of uh, sexual and reproductive health, discussing them separately makes it easier for them to come back together and seek support on each other. How best can we ensure that uh, we end uh, violence? And with the girls saying, this is what we want, and the boys saying, oh, we were not aware. So then they're able to discuss and come together and be able to, to work on that. The uh, leaders in our training program, uh, like I said, is one of the programs that we have uh, where both are included. It's because some of the discussions are all about general uh, issues that we can be able to say, how can we support each other? And in that way, they're able to build uh, a support even in the training. I'd just like to highlight on that, that one of the programs that's been most successful in bringing men in is our computer and life skills program. So over the years, we have um, three computer labs. So we have um, 60, potentially 60 computer uh, students a day. And uh, that was very successful in bringing in chiefs, local counselors, teachers, Apparently, we've trained most of the administrative staff at the hospital. So they come for the computer skills. They want to increase their uh, professional skills. And they don't really want to come for the life skills. They don't really want to come for all that. But the minute they get involved in it, after the first week, they are begging us for more. They always want them to be longer programs. And through that program, we've trained t uh, priests who've come and uh, as I say, chiefs, local counselors, but a lot of police officers. And the police stations gave them time off uh, so that they could come, which is very impressive. Um, and that's been very successful in bringing the boys in. Okay, this question uh, segues nicely. Um, so this is from Kathleen asking if there are similar programs uh, for boys in other countries in Africa um, and what about within Lesotho are there similar uh, herd boy type programs happening with other organizations so Ndate Selo or Memeletsani which of you feels best uh, equipped to answer well I'll, I'll respond to that and Memeletsani will, will add on um with the, in the country, yes, uh, we have other organizations that are, are working with the head boys, but uh, they are not doing what uh, exactly we are we are doing in terms of engaging boys. Uh, they are doing ones of uh, programs, which of course I haven't seen them famous in the in the country. Um, I also want to tell that um, we are part of the Men Engage Southern Africa whereby there are programs for, for MAID in South Africa, in Botswana, um, in Lesotho and Eswatini, whereby it's a network of other help Lesotho and those other organizations in such countries that are working with boys that uh, we, we share the successes, we share the lessons learned, and uh, we, we, we even collaborate in terms of uh, sharing the, the reports of uh, progress 
over our, our interventions. And Andrade, as you were saying earlier, you've been to many countries actually on behalf of Help Lesotho to talk about our programs, uh, particularly with boys. And it's really exciting to see the increase of interest. Um, I think if the world could just focus on the boys and give them the support they need uh, for a few years, it would make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a couple uh, last questions that I think I'll actually merge together, but um, does anybody have any last questions that you were hoping to have answered uh, in this opportunity to chat with Ndate Sello and me, Amaletsani? I don't see any other hands up. Okay, so the final question, um, if I blend these together, um, there's, there's one question asking about helping um, the herd boys with food insecurity, uh, and another question about what's next for helpless you two. Um, and so I think we can bring those things together as we look to the coming months and, and what we will be doing. Who'd like to tackle that? I think that is a lot can talk about uh, the first one on uh, the issue of uh, food insecurity for the head boys and how we can tackle that and I can uh, just uh, wrap around uh, the what is uh, in uh, pro I mean in the plans going forward. Over to you Ndate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, during the first lockdown, we, we advised ourselves to work from home. That is that was actually calling our beneficiaries, all of our beneficiaries from the database to get to hear how they are doing and also to give uh, precise information on COVID because there was a lot of fear and uh, misconceptions about COVID. One thing we learned out of that was that uh, um, people are leaking food in the, in the households. That's uh, why we advocated or we initiated uh, a Caring for Caregivers uh, project whereby we were issuing food packages to our beneficiaries. And uh, out of thousands of uh, people who benefited from that uh, project were the, the head boys. Uh, they, they also um, got uh, food packages from that initiative. And of course, we are, we are so thankful of your support to, to that. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mayor Kate, uh, for the question. I think uh, for us uh, going forward, uh, for Meli that I saw Metes, uh, Metes as a uh, question. We are so thankful for the contribution that uh, Rotary has made because we are looking into improving access to education for uh, the beneficiaries that we work with. That is uh, one of the projects that we are working around. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, most of our grade ones, in fact, uh, all the schools have lost uh, uh, two years of, uh, of uh, education or access to education. And with the schools that we work with from the vulnerable uh, communities, they have not even had, they don't have access to online uh, lessons and uh, such things. So we are working on uh, how best we can be able to uh, uh, provide them with supplies, school supplies, so that they can have a uh, access to workbooks that they can work on their English, their maths, their science. And uh, we also try to buy supplies so that they can be able to at least be able to have uh, a few of uh, the, 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 the lessons from, uh, from uh, helpless social support. This we are also doing from, uh, with the help of the alumni. Most of our alumni are not uh, working right now and they have volunteered to be able to do basic uh, tutoring for these uh, children, because uh, as I mentioned, they don't have uh, access to online uh, uh, education. So we are providing with them uh, the information around COVID and how they can be able to protect themselves and then the information around uh, the subjects at schools. With uh, COVID-19, Bomelibunda, they've also had a challenge of most parents losing their jobs. And as they lost their jobs, most uh, uh, children, especially those around uh, grade 12, have not been able to pay their examination fees. And this means that they will not be able to write their exams. Even for those that were able to write their exams, they can't have access to their uh, transcripts. So as a helpless, what we are also trying to 
see how we can be able to help those so that they can uh, be able to have access to writing for the exams and be able to move forward with their education. Uh, on uh, activities, uh, we also have uh, been uh, privileged, and thank you very much to most of uh, the donors that also helped us with the gender-based uh, uh, violence blitz that we worked on last year. We are continuing to do that because uh, with COVID, the more cases of uh, gender-based violence are still there. And with a few, uh, the, the, the funding that we have gotten from you, we are able to have uh, radio programs, we are still able to have some outreach uh, activities with the girl force members to ensure that people are able to know more about uh, gender-based violence and how they can be able to uh, end uh, gender-based violence. Uh, our programs uh, include uh, uh, work with the grandmothers, work with the young mothers, work with the head boys. So we are also trying to recruit more so that they can still be able to have access to some of the services and some of the uh, life skills are training, be able to have access to a sustainable livelihood. For example, the grandmothers and young mothers, they are building gardens, we are ensuring that they have the seeds so that they can be able to have uh, also improve their uh, food security. We have uh, the leadership uh, in training uh, program now, leaders in training program now. But as one of our uh, ways to reach our vision, which is around ensuring that the youth have uh, a self-sustaining futures, we are looking into having two programs that is uh, around uh, uh, supporting them and ensuring that they are able, they are supported to ensure that they get a job, because we know with everything else they don't have access to the internet to be able to access whatever job openings are out there. We don't, they don't have. Uh, the ability to know how best they can work on their CVs, how best they can uh, plan for the interviews. So we are looking into having a program that can work on uh, uh, supporting them and strengthening their skills so that they can be able to find the jobs. But we know that uh, it's not everyone that will also be looking for a job and not all of them will find a job. So we are also looking into having entrepreneurial skills training where those who have uh, those uh, uh, ideas, business ideas, they can come and then we can support them. We can have a, 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 a workshop with them where we are going to be able to expose them to the entrepreneurial uh, 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 opportunities that are out there so that they can now be able to know where to go from here because uh, looking at the high unemployment rate, it is very difficult for anyone to go anywhere, especially during this uh, precarious uh, times of uh, COVID. So those are some of uh, the, the programs that we are planning going uh, forward, and we hope that uh, they can also be able to help us reach and ensure that uh, we are able to ensure that the youth have our self-sustaining uh, futures. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for that rundown, May. Um, I don't see any other questions popping up, so I think our timing is good to, uh, to wrap this up. So over to you, Peg. Thank you. I just want to reinforce a, a question that was raised. All of our staff are local. We have no Canadians there. Um, May is overseeing a staff of almost 30. They are trained from the beginning and the training is ongoing. So we are, this year, refreshing everything. We're, we're going over all of our HR policies and procedures. We're going over our content, making sure things are relevant. Uh, as you know, we have roughly 15,000 people in our programs every year, and this is very intense work. So we're doing a Herculean review this year if it doesn't kill me, it will absolutely make a big difference. <clears throat> Excuse me. And our staff are so well respected. I worry about them a lot, as you know. Uh, they're exposed to such trauma every day, such heartbreaking situations, and they care so deeply. They're not cynical. They haven't hardened themselves against these stories. They petition for their beneficiaries constantly, which is part of their job. So it's very emotional work. And 
uh, your support means the world to them. The whole point of Helpful Suchu was to make sure that people did not feel that they were alone under all these pandemics that they've been exposed to. And your support is part of them feeling that they are known, that they are cared about, and they're part of something bigger than themselves. As we all know, when, when life seems overwhelming, it's very important to know that others are reaching into your world to help you to step up and speak out. So thank you for your support, for all the love and care, and uh, of course, the finances that you provide. And uh, May Mamelit Sandy, thank you so much for your leadership. And Ndati Sello, you've been very brave to take on so many of these programs that are very difficult to run. As I said that, I'm just thinking of the two hours it takes to get to some of these locations over horrendous roads just to get to the beneficiaries and then back and lug everything you want for your programs with you and find a place to have them in that where the roofs aren't leaking, where the, the boys will feel comfortable and safe where they can access from wherever they're uh, doing the herding. It's a lot and thank you very much for that. So we wish you all safety. We wish you all um, the support that you need to make it through this session. Tessa, did you have a question? I was just trying to do a hand clap <laughs> to say thank you to, to Sello and, and to May for all that they are doing. Well, let's do it. <laughs> So blessings to you all, and we'll talk next time. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.